When did the U.S. healthcare system go from a philanthropic program to a multi-billion dollar industry? How does it make you feel to know that the richest country is the only one in the developed world without universal health care? The same country spends the most on health care and has the lowest life expectancy. Over half a million Americans file for bankruptcy due to medical bills. If I get a chance to f up the pharmaceutical industry. And if that's not enough, how would you feel if you have to pay to hold your own baby after giving birth? Pay to do that? Yes. To hold my own child that I've been carrying inside of my womb. These are the countries around the world with universal health care. Even a poor nation like Rwanda has one, but the United States doesn't. Does it make any sense? I made the biggest mistake of my life a couple of years ago. I got sick in America. No health insurance. U.S. prescription drug prices surpass those in 32 other countries by around 150%. The average cost of an MRI scan in the United States is $3,031, compared to $811 in New Zealand and $181 in Spain. The cost for hip replacement in the U.S. is around $29,067, where in Spain is $6,757. Everything in the health sector in the U.S. is for profit, and it's not for the sake of the human life. I am sharing this with deep sadness because I have experienced the health system in the U.S. and here in Spain. And if you're living anywhere in Europe, you're probably really shocked to find out that a country like the U.S. has such a poor health system. And when I say poor, I mean poor for the people, not for the profiteers. Because this system, it's solely based on profits, making money, and it's again the usual suspects, like BlackRock and Vanguard, the companies that own big pharmaceutical companies. Now that's the problem. Like whether it's insurance, big pharma, big medical, the pressure is so high to hit those quarterly earnings and produce for Wall Street. It is not about patients. It is not about patient outcomes. It is not about helping people. Johnson & Johnson's net earnings are expected to be about 20.9 billion US dollars in 2021. Johnson & Johnson has experienced dividend growth for nearly 60 years and has consistently outperformed the S&P 500 over the past 25 years. Institutional investors own 70.50 4% of the outstanding shares of Johnson & Johnson, giving them a majority stake in the company. This interest is also greater than any other pharmaceutical firm. If you're living in Europe, you're probably pretty shocked that America has such a bad healthcare system. The reason is because here in Europe, you most likely have a free healthcare, plus you can purchase your own private insurance, and that's affordable. In United States, everyone is really confused when it comes to healthcare. The insurance companies have such a monopoly over the whole system. And even when you're picking an insurance, you don't even know what it covers, what are the deductibles, what are the, what are the co-payments. There is nothing really free and it's extremely expensive. The prices at the hospitals and doctor's visits are blown out of proportion. Nobody knows what are the exact charges they're supposed to be charged. Same insurance can charge you different prices for the same procedure. Nobody has a grip over that, especially the patients. The cost of consumers should go down too, but that hasn't necessarily been the case. And a lot of that has to do with the billing system. The poorest people are the ones suffering. And if you think that in the most critical situation, when you have to go to the emergency room, you're covered, think twice. Because even if you're insured, in so many cases, the medical bill from the emergency room is not included. So many things. The reason is because some of the doctors at the medical room might be part of a different medical group some of the supplies used to treat you or to do tests. Anything that is used in the emergency room can be part of a different medical group and your insurance can be covering just part of it. But of course, there is no way to know because nobody knows, definitely not the patients. Team Health, a medical staffing group backed by private equity titan 
charges several times the cost of emergency room care. This is the anatomy of an ER bill, where the charges were 7.7 .7 times more, and even though a big amount was not collected, a hefty 10% went to corporate profits. These companies put a white coat on and cloak themselves in the goodwill we rightly have towards medical professionals. But in practice, they behave like almost any other private equity-backed firm. Their desire is to make profit. The American Hospital Association declined to comment on criticisms of the current hospital system. Don't make the mistake of getting sick in the United States. The people that are covered by the government with government funding, with Medicare and Medi-Cal, are people who are retired or disabled or really poor. You cannot choose your physician, their limitations to your coverage, it doesn't give you the freedom to choose basic things. I would be very happy to read in the comments, how is the healthcare in your country? Are you experiencing any issues with the health system? Is everything smooth? What are the insurance policies? Let me know. Here in Spain, like in many countries in Europe, you can pick your own insurance, private insurance. There are no hidden costs, there are no deductibles, there is nothing imaginary about your insurance. You have a price which you pay every month and it can slightly change over the years, very slightly, but the price that you pay for about 90 euro a month, you're getting a full coverage. I don't pay anything additional to the doctor, I can go and order blood panels if I want to every week every three days and nobody is going to question that. For comparison, I found an insurance company in Illinois and their lowest tier plan, they have different plans, right? That differ in prices. The lowest tier plan, it's called catastrophic. The pharmaceutical companies hold patents over each drug they manufacture. When this pattern expires, they have to review the drugs, change the wording, add some substance, or reformulate the product. A few years ago, when the opioid crisis in America started, which sickens me and it makes me so mad, they came up with a drug called Oxycontin. This drug was supposed to treat only terminally ill patients. Apparently, it started selling so well and it's so highly addictive that it just made all these billionaires even happier. They did not reformulate it. They changed the wording. We take the extended time release of the cotton system and create a new opioid specifically designed to treat moderate pain for long-term use. And when they start seeing that people are getting so addicted to the drug, they said that they're experiencing a pseudo symptoms and they need more of that medication. It became a real epidemic. The time has come to redefine the nature of pain. The current opioid crisis is one of the most severe public health disasters in modern history. It started in the mid-90s when the powerful agent OxyContin, marketed by Purdue Pharma and approved by the Food and Drug Administration, provoked the first wave of deaths associated with the use of legal prescription opioids. Dr. Fenix, did more than 1% of your patients become addicted to OxyContin? Without urgent intervention, 1.2 million people in the United States and Canada Dr. will die from opioid overdoses by the end of the decade. I can't believe how many of them are dead now. I cannot imagine another government allowing this to happen. I think this is... This is just beyond any comprehension. I would like you to hear what a former medication sales rep has to say. What was it like being a drug rep? As soon as insurance took over and we moved to an insurance model and the industry had moved to hiring good looking young people who will go out and hustle, more of like sales type people who have no clinical background. You're gonna pay me this much money and all I gotta do is go talk to doctors about this new drug that they all wanna talk about? you will become best friends with the most important practitioners in this region. 
That's the only way you're, you'll sustain your job. It's the only way you'll be successful. I want to finish this conversation in a little bit more positive note. If you can, if you can move, if you want to move and have a better healthcare, even for a procedure, I think it's worth exploring different places, even if it's not for permanent stay. It doesn't have to be Europe. It can be Mexico. Anything that's close to the U.S., it's more affordable, it's better. Prescription drug prices remain out of reach for many Americans, who pay among the highest prices in the world. Mark Cuban, who's worth an estimated $4.5 billion, has had enough. And just like that, Cuban is taking on these absurd markups. Mark Cuban, who is an entrepreneur, and he knows a thing or two about business. So he's not a socialist. He is so much about capitalism and making money. He created something which is admirable. He calls it a compassionate capitalism. He decided to create a company to get more affordable drugs to people. This leukemia medication goes for about $2,000 at many pharmacies. Cuban's company sells it for as low as $17.10. Landon was paying $3,000 a month. It's now going to cost him $63 a month. Oh, wait, wait. I was wrong. Wait, wait, wait. No, I was wrong. $63 for three months. The medications that they're providing are sold online. They're getting them in bulk, buying them, and selling them for very little profit. They're saving people over 70, 80, sometimes 90% of the cost of the medication. It'll show you not only what we sell it for, it'll show you our cost. And like we'll, actual cost? Actual cost, what we really pay for it. We mark it up 15%, that's it. We have a $3 pharmacy fee and $5 for shipping. That's it. So there are new ways. Hopefully there is more transparency coming. Even though there's so many lawsuits against these companies that are destroying people's lives, I think people like Mark Cuban and others that are working towards a better future are the future. Also, I think everyone should just try to stay healthy, emphasize on preventive care, make sure you're eating a balanced, healthy diet, exercise, value your connections, try to laugh more and just be happier. So these are one of the small things we can try to do to just have a better and healthier life. And I hope the people that are coming soon to Spain or to Europe are going to have that life. Wishing you all the best and I will see you in my next one. Ciao. What do you think of the people who are profiting off the sale of these medicines? You bastards. <laughs>